Town Clerk Mark Bernacki, our Register of Voters, Mr. Pete Gostin, our Board of Education President, Mr. Nick Mercier is here, former Board of Ed President Sharon Beloyne Savedra is here as well, our School Superintendent and my boss, just so I can go to work on Monday, Nancy Sarah is here, Board of Assessment Appeals, uh, Mr. Todd Cheney is here representing them, and uh, that does it for elected officials that I know of. If I did miss you, I apologize. We'll give you a round of applause at this point. Thank you very much for joining us. You can clap your hands there. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the big moment you've been waiting for. She definitely does not need an introduction. Just follow her Facebook and or her Instagram and you will understand this woman's passion for running this city. Ladies and gentlemen, the current and future mayor of the city of New Britain, Mayor Aaron Stewart! If you know my parents, you certainly know where I get my height from. <laughs> I'm going to give it just a few minutes because we are going live on Facebook. For those of you who know me, our social media presence is extremely important to our success and making sure that everybody is watching over here on Justin too. So we do this thing, it's called 40 Live as the 40th mayor of the city of New Britain. Uh, every couple of weeks before each council meeting, uh, we do a Facebook live video where I talk about the agenda and all the things that are happening in the city. Has anybody here watched it? Yeah. All right, see? <laughs> so as we're building our audience on, uh, on Facebook live, it's extremely important. And one of the, the most important things about uh, being in government is opening government to everybody and making sure that your government is accessible and open to people who are interested and um, making sure that people are in the know because there's never anything that needs to be hidden or secret and we certainly don't roll like that. So we make sure that we do everything in, in the public eye. But um, before I get into my speech, I just want to thank all of you so much from the bottom of my heart for being here tonight and here we go again. <laughs> This is, the, one of the, this is the third speech uh, that I've made like this in the past four years, and I continue to be humbled and, and absolutely um, stunned at the support of all the amazing people in this room, and, and then some, and everybody who couldn't make it tonight. Everybody who's watching from at home sick, like me, thanks for your donations. <laughs> um, I, I certainly am on a lot of cold medicine right now, so I apologize if I sound a little stuffy. Um, some of you all have been here, actually most of you have been with us uh, from the beginning. Um, especially like my mom and dad, um, even though I, I think my parents might be among the, the crew that of uh, the many people telling me that I was crazy to embark on this journey back in 2013. <laughs> um, but look at how far we've come. So I have to end the suspense right now, right? This is what we're all here for. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been the honor of a lifetime to serve as the 40th mayor of the city of New Britain. And I am absolutely honored and proud to stand here today and announce my intention to officially seek a third term. I know most of you are all too familiar with the story of where we have been and where we are going, but for those who might not be too familiar with it, or those watching on 40 Live right now, please indulge me. When I took office uh, three years ago, New Britain was in a very different place than it was today. The city's finances were bad, a deficit of almost $30 million, and letters from the credit agencies were piling up. All around town storefronts were vacant, buildings were crumbling, homelessness was rampant and on full display in Central Park. Our school system was being used as a punchline and our youth, and frankly many of us, had lost the pride that we once felt for our hometown. And all I can say is, what a big difference two terms makes. <laughs> By working together in a spirit of bipartisanship and shared purpose, We've transformed our community from one that we doubted ourselves to one that has been nationally recognized as an all-America city. We've made a lot of news in the last 1,165 days <laughs> that we've been in office, not who's counting, right? Some's been good, some's been bad, some has been, well, very interesting to say the least. But when I first ran for mayor, I talked about the need to bring a new generation of leadership to New Britain, and thanks to all of you in this room, we did just that. 
When I ran for re-election in 2015, I said that we were setting a new standard for what you should expect from your government, and I believe we have. And tonight I want to talk with you about a city that is leading the way, not just for our residents, but for our cities and towns across the entire state of Connecticut. Unlike some other Connecticut cities who are looking to be bailed out by either the state or by their neighboring communities, we in New Britain have done much more than merely admit that there was a problem. We put together a comprehensive plan to address those problems, and we made the decisions necessary to restore confidence in our city. We didn't sit here and cry wolf because we realized we were in it pretty deep. We rolled up our sleeves like the blue-collar working-class city that we are, and we did what needed to be done to get ourselves out of the mess that we were in. And that's what leadership takes. The New Britain of 2017 is very different from the New Britain I took lead of in 2013. All of you here tonight helped us establish a new generation of leadership, which enabled us to set a new standard, and now we're proving that it is us who will lead the way forward, and for that, we have a city today that is stable, that is proud, and that is prosperous. I think you all caught on to my theme of leading the way, so I want to talk a little bit more about how we are doing just that. Um, I firmly believe that people want to invest in cities that are investing in themselves. I said that time and time again, so let's talk about how New Britain is leading the way in infrastructure. During the past two years, we've aggressively moved forward with our downtown streetscape makeover, including the complete renovation of Central Park. What was an eyesore three years ago is now the site of weekly farmers markets, food trucks, concerts, a safe and open gatherings place that is drawing folks to our city center. Our next phase involves major improvements on Columbus Boulevard and Bank Street as the start of a project also that is very, very close to my heart, the new iconic Beehive Bridge. We have been nationally recognized for our creative efforts in improving our roadways. But infrastructure doesn't mean just roads. We're upgrading our aging school facilities as well so that our children can leverage educational resources that are second to none and continue to compete at the highest academic levels. And Nancy, Sarah, I know you feel me on that. So does Sharon and Nick, where are you guys? <laughs> our last major project was a complete renovation of Gaffney School and next on the list, Molly Academy, where we hope to break ground by the end of the year. One of the key items that people look at when gauging the vitality of a city is whether businesses want to be there. So let's talk about leading the way in economic development. First off, we've streamlined our process. No longer does a prospective business owner get bounced around City Hall department by department. The red tape is gone. We have sought to become a true partner with those who want to do business here, and the proof is in the pudding. We brought in over 65 new businesses and added over 800 jobs to our workforce. Our grand list, yes. Our grand list has grown not one, not two, but three years in a row during the tough economic times that this state is facing. And we are about to embark on a project set to be the largest downtown development in recent history, where the former New Britain Police Department building stood will soon be the site of a $58 million mixed-use development, bringing retail, restaurant, and residential space to a key area just adjacent to the CT Fast Track. Say what you will about Fast Track. Yeah. <laughs> Say what you will about Fast Track to all the doubters in the room and out there watching. But the hundreds of people that I see getting off those buses every day is exactly what we have capitalized on to leverage state and federal grant money to make all of these visions that we've had a reality, and we are getting it done. We are now in a place where we can be picky about the types of businesses that we want in our city. No longer do we just settle for anything just because it's something. We have the opportunity to choose, and that's a nice place to be in. We have new private housing developments that are emerging through the city as well. Many investors are helping to refurbish and preserve our beautiful historic buildings. And I know those in the room on our, our historic preservation committee certainly appreciate that. Kenny, Don. <laughs> you can't drive too far across the city without seeing new development in almost every corner. And here's the most important part. Who's ready to tell somebody that their beer is proudly brewed in the city of New Britain? <laughs> We'll be welcoming the Alvarium Beer Company to New Britain this spring. Uh, and Alvarium, fun fact, they're called Alvarium Beer Company because in Latin, Alvarium means beehive. Aww. Fun fact. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm proud of the marketing initiatives <laughs> that we've taken to promote ourselves as home of the bees uh, in more way than, than just one. And just next week, we'll be unveiling a new marketing logo and slogan for the city, which will help promote us far past our city limits. 
It's helped us realize that our limits are endless. So we're going to talk about leading the way in innovation. Our Smart City Initiative has seen us add one of the state's largest municipal solar arrays. We've brought free public Wi-Fi to our downtown area. We've embraced fuel cell technology at the high school. Smedley was a very integral part of that. <laughs> We've got plenty of projects currently in the works as well. We're leading the way in green technology. A city can't attract residents or businesses without stable, predictable financial management. So we're leading the way when it comes to managing our money. I wish I could do that with my own bank account. <laughs> I mentioned that we had a structural deficit of $30 million when I took office. Today we've closed that gap, and we've built a rainy day fund of nearly $15 million. And everyone's first intention is always, oh, well, what are you going to spend it on? Well, we're not, uh, and here's why. <laughs> That's definitely going to come quite in handy when the state government uh, inevitably cuts municipal aid or short changes us on pilot funds like we're so used to having happen to us. But we've accomplished also the unthinkable, moving every one of the city's labor unions onto high deductible health care plans as well, securing numerous other concessions from our employees, which are projected to save us over $9 million over the life of the contracts. That's what's keeping us afloat. We found a way to protect the health care of our employees while preserving the city's bank account. Our employees and our unions have stepped up to the plate. They've stepped up to the plate to be a partner in solving our problems, and that wouldn't have happened without good leadership on both ends. So a big round of applause goes to us. And I would be severely remiss if I didn't give a heartfelt thank you to the people of this great city for their sacrifice because we could not simply cut our way back to solvency. We had to increase revenues as well. But I believe that I was elected to make those tough and often unpopular choices. I know in my heart that they're the right choices for the long term, for our long term health, for our long term stability. And I have to say, I didn't think that after that first year <laughs> that I'd be standing here today about to go into my fourth. I thought I would be a goner for the decisions that I had to make, but uh, in a strange, strange turn of events, um, people actually appreciate someone who's honest with them. <laughs> Maybe we need a little bit more of that in politics today. <laughs> and I think it's because of that that every morning when I get up, I can look myself in the mirror and feel good about the person that I see. It's definitely what keeps me humble, and that leads me to remind you about how we are leading the way when it comes to compassion. Three years ago, New Britain was nearing a crisis with chronically homeless population reaching nearly 200 individuals. While we have always had you know, many wonderful groups, agencies, churches, individuals wanting to help, there was no coordination between them all. And as a result, the resources were not getting to those who needed them the most. I'll give a shout out to my crew from CMHA in the back who was a big help with that. <laughs> we brought back the mayor's 10-year plan to end homelessness and rebranded it and called it Building Hope Together a consortium of city, community, state, and faith-based entities that collaboratively built a model that was very unique to New Britain. And I'm so proud to say that we have brought our chronically homeless number down to zero. <laughs> we still have our work cut out for us. Chronically homeless versus homeless are two very different things, but that's some inside baseball stuff that we don't need to talk about tonight. <laughs> but um, as all of you know, I do a lot of traveling around the state, and everywhere I go, uh, people cannot contain their amazement at the progress we've made in just three short years here in New Britain. But I have to tell you, I'm not done yet. Everything I've mentioned tonight must be sustained in order to make the city what we all know it can be. We have to push ourselves. Each and every one of you have to continue doing what you do. We have to keep pushing ourselves. It's a team effort, and I certainly wouldn't be successful without my team. My team of aldermen who have done incredible things in the last two years, they deserve another shot, too. Round of applause. You can't do it without a solid team of people around you. You can't do it by yourself, and it's about surrounding yourself with good people that will make you uh, prosperous and, and allow us to do the, make the accomplishments that, that we've made. I'd be lost without my campaign team. Thank you to all of them and our volunteers who made tonight possible, especially Mylene, Kim, Justin, Dave, Jody. Thank you all very much. Our campaign um, looks a little different this year, and I have to take a moment just to um, recognize 
I'm going off script, but I feel that I need to do this. Um, I've had a really solid team of people around me for the last four years, um, and people who have helped propel this campaign into new heights. Uh, and there's one person that's uh, missing this year, uh, and that's Will Reamer. And I know his mom is here tonight. She is holding it down for the family. <laughs> um, Will had been uh, battling an illness since he was born. Um, he was born with cystic fibrosis. Uh, and um, uh, he passed away uh, earlier this year. Um, but he was a dear, dear friend of mine and somebody who behind the scenes did a lot of work. He wasn't somebody that you saw out in front, um, but he was the person that was making the logos and designing the mail pieces and the things that you see on the tables. You know, he was the person that set up the website and actually taught me a lot about social media. Um, so a lot of what you see in that realm on the internet is because of him. Uh, and it'll certainly be a different campaign this year without him, um, but he's taught all of us a lot that we'll take with us going into this election. And I just want to acknowledge him and it'll be nice to have a campaign. I've decided to seek re-election because I care deeply about my hometown, about my beehive. <laughs> I'm 110% committed to the city of New Britain. We may not be rich, but that's what makes us who we are. It makes us unique. When we don't have the means, we make do. We're defined by our tenacity. We never give up. We will be a story of success. New Britain must continue leading the way, and as your mayor, you know that I'll never give up, especially when it comes to getting a new baseball team. <laughs> but from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom, bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for your continued support. I promise to continue earning your trust and eventually your vote. It's a long way to November. We're starting kind of early this time. <laughs> but the work starts now, and that's where I call on each one of you to help tell our story of all of our Team Stewart successes. We will cover this city with our message. Every voter in town, trust me, every voter in town is going to know that our team is fierce, that our team is dedicated, and that there will be absolutely not a single soul standing in our way because we've come too far these last few years to turn back now. So thank you all so much for your support, and I'll see you on the campaign trail.